Welcome to another video in the course where we are learning how to write a proper research thesis. Now, in the previous video, we have started to discuss primary data collection methods and uh, it was observation. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss our next option of primary data collection method and it's going to be interviews and interviews are used really a lot especially by uh, bachelor and master students in business administration so let's go for the official definition of what a research interview is so the research interview is a purposeful conversation between two or more people requiring the interviewer to establish a report to ask concise and unambiguous questions to which the interviewee is willing to respond and listen attentively now, I think we all get the idea what an interview is, but a research interview is something a little more specific and a little more advanced if we want to do it really properly, because we cannot allow any bias to occur. You know, bias, for instance, can be that we are leading the interviewee uh, in some direction and our results will be biased. Or generally, my idea is that it is a bit harder to conduct uh, proper research interview than we can imagine. Therefore, we need to learn a few things about interviews before we really try it. Moreover, there are three kinds of research interviews that we can conduct and we need to select the one that fits with our research nature. So we will go through it now and uh, so that you can choose which type of research interview fits your research the best. First of all, we have structured interviews. These really are very standardized interviews. In this case, you as a researcher are coming to an interview and you are bringing yourself literally a paper on which there are given fixed standardized questions in a predetermined order and nothing will change. You will ask all of these questions and you will record the interviewee's answers to them. I mean, on one hand, um, it has sort of some benefits because as the interview is standardized, you know your role and your only task is sort of to just conduct uh, the answers to these questions. Because later on, when we will be talking about unstructured interviews, which is the complete opposite, there you also need to have some sort of a charisma and a, really a knowledge of the context that you are researching. So with standardized interviews, these are quite simple to conduct. Second of all, we have semi-structured interviews. And I think you can guess it correctly. We again, as a researcher, are coming to an interview with a predetermined uh, list of questions. But in this case, we are not uh, that fixed to these questions and the order of questions can change. We can also take away some questions and do not ask them. And also we can maybe add some questions if we during the interview find out that some particular topic is very interesting. So that is a semi-structured interview. And finally, we are going for an unstructured interview. This is sort of a free conversation. When we as a researcher, we come to an interview, we sit down with the interviewee, and the only thing we do is that we say some, uh, let's say, topic. For instance, accounting. We are researching companies, and we just sit down with the head of accounting of that company, and we let this person to freely talk. And this person is going to give you some subjective feelings or some perceptions of the events that have happened. So you see, these are the three formats of interviews that we can conduct. Now we need to learn which of these three works well with which research nature. Do you remember many videos ago when we have been choosing research nature? It was exploratory, descriptive or explanatory. Now it depends which of these three we have chosen. We will have to accordingly choose our type of research interview. So let's begin. If we have chosen exploratory research nature, meaning that we are trying to explore these newly occurring phenomena, then we should go for unstructured interviews and maybe we can use semi-structured interviews. So just think about the situation. You are exploring this new phenomena which has not been researched yet. So of course the obvious choice is to try to interview people and let them talk freely because you as a researcher do not have that much knowledge of the context of the phenomena that you are researching. So unstructured interviews are the best here. 
Also, you can use semi-structured, but here I have a strong advice for you. What I have seen many times as a very successful primary data collection method was sort of two rounds of data collection under exploratory uh, research nature. So the first round of data collection was unstructured interview, maybe one or two. During this unstructured interview, you as a researcher are learning about the phenomena. So let's say you will learn some information that will allow you later on to construct questions for your second round of data collection, which will already be semi-structured interviews. So you do two rounds, one unstructured and one semi-structured. This is a very common and useful practice. Second of all, we have the descriptive research nature or descriptive study. Here it is strongly recommended to use structured interviews because uh, when you remember back in the days when we were choosing our research nature, the descriptive research nature is about examining the relationships between variables that are occurring within a phenomena. And now within this structured interview, you really can construct the questions the way that maybe each question represents one relationship between two variables or one question represents a variable, then another question represents another variable, and then third question represents the relationship between these two. So really structured interviews work very well with descriptive research nature. And finally, we have explanatory study. Here we can use both semi-structured and structured interviews, but both have a little bit different use. So uh, previously conducted studies, because if you want to do explanatory study, you have to have a background um, of, of a lot of studies that have been conducted uh, before your work takes place. So all of these previous studies have identified some variables and some relationships. So you know these already. You just need to explain them. That's why your study is called explanatory. Now you can use structured interviews to have statistical analysis of these relationships. So uh, that's why the structured interviews work well. Now also the semi-structured interviews work well if you want to use qualitative explanation of these relationships. So both of these work very well with explanatory studies. All right, now we have gone through all three types of interviews that we can have, and we have also discussed which of these types works well with which of the research natures. Now there is a bit of downside with uh, interviews as a primary data collection method, and those are some issues that are connected with this method. So let's discuss these. First of all, there is issue with reliability. If you remember, it is maybe 20 videos back in this course, we have discussed reliability and validity of a research. Reliability basically refers to the fact whether when someone else on some different place, maybe under some bit different context, in a different time, would conduct the same interview, uh, the same research with the same aim and same methods, whether the results of you and this other person would be similar or maybe the same. So that's the reliability of a research. If, if they would be the same, then your research is considered reliable. Now, if you are using interviews, especially unstructured interviews, then this is a real threat to a reliability of your research. Because let's say that you interview 10 people or you interview even 20 people, which is considered quite a lot because maybe one interview is going to take you over only half day. So 20 interviews is a lot. Even though when you conduct such large amount of unstructured interviews, if someone else in some other company would conduct 20 interviews, the responses that you to these two researches would get would be very dissimilar. That means that the unstructured interviews are really a bit of a threat to a reliability. The solution to this usually is um, that you try to make your population smaller. You do not try to generalize that much with your results. So let's say if you are conducting 20 unstructured interviews, you do not try to claim that your results are applicable globally and that all companies around the world can rely on your results. No, you will make your generalizability a little bit smaller, maybe for your country or just for your region. So that is the first threat to reliability. 
Second of all, we have the interviewer and interviewee bias. I think you can pretty easily imagine this. When two people are talking, let's say it's a business meeting, both of them need to uh, behave professionally. And the same is, of course, true for a research interview. Many biases can occur. For instance, you are interviewing employees of a company. And now manager of this company says that he wants to be attending these interviews. So he is sitting in the corner of the room where the interview is, takes place. Now the employees are not maybe going to be that honest with their answers when they know that the manager is listening to them. As well, Finley connected with this is um, that you need to record your interviews, let's say on some mobile device or something like that. Often people do not like it and just the fact that they know that you are going to be recording them can cause a bias to occur. And the same is true for you as a researcher. If you will be asking the questions in a leading way or you will be forgetting to ask some questions, well, that's also a bias. So you need to be really careful that no interviewee and no interviewer bias will occur. And final thread we have already discussed a bit, and that is a thread or issue with generalizability of a research that uses interviews as a primary data collection method. Because usually the practice is to conduct 10, 20, 50 interviews, and all of a sudden you would like to generalize to a population, maybe to the whole market, which can be thousands of companies. So when you are going to conduct interviews, you need to justify the selection of your sample. Most likely you are going to have non-probability sampling techniques. And that means that you really need to be sure that you clearly state why have you selected these exact cases. And so that when you interview them, your uh, research results or the outcomes of this will be generalizable to some extent. Of course, when you are using interviews, it's a qualitative study mostly, and you will be unable to use the statistical uh, analysis. So there is nothing wrong about it, just that interviews are a very specific data collection method, and you need to justify the selection of your sample. So those were the interviews. And in the next video, we are going to discuss questionnaires, which is really a different type of primary data collection method.